fellows. I hope you all are doing great because I am. My name is Ratlani Prudence Waralesola and I welcome you to my YouTube channel. If you're a returning subscriber, a warm welcome back to you. I really appreciate it. If you are not yet subscribed, please do click on the red subscription button below. So most of the matriculants have received their metric results. Uh, actually, all South African matriculants have received their metric results. Um, I'd like to say congratulations to those who made it and to those who didn't make it. It's not too late. You can still go back to school and try again. So today I'm going to be speaking to those matriculants who have been accepted into two universities or even more universities, two or three universities for the same course, but they have a dilemma of choosing which university to go to. I am going to share my experience and hopefully by doing that, some of you will pick up a few pointers and you will be helped in making the right decision. Yeah. <laughs> the right decision on which university to go to. So, uh, back in 2017, 2017, I did matric 2016. 2017, I was accepted at the University of Cape Town and at the University of Pretoria. I had applied for actuarial sciences and applied mathematics at every university that I applied for. Actual sciences was my first course and applied mathematics was my second course. I think I've mentioned this before in one of the videos that I've made. I'll link it somewhere. Not sure where it will appear, but it's going to pop. <laughs> um, so when I got my results, I checked my status at Cape Town because my heart was at Cape Town. I wanted to go to Cape Town wholeheartedly. So then I had went to an interview for a bursary before the results came out. So I was waiting on the feedback from the bursary whether I had made it or I had not. I waited for the feedback and the feedback came back and it was bad news. I was told that I didn't get the bursary but a plan was gonna be made for me. So I waited to hear from them again on what the plan was they came back to me and they said they're going to put me on a smaller yana bazaar that doesn't cover everything but just gives you smaller yana amount. It's a partial bazaar basically. I was given a partial bazaar. Now I had to go back to the drawing board and think, is going to Cape Town really still what I must do? It was a hard decision for me to make. It was really a hard decision for me to make. I remember there was a point where there was someone that I used to talk to who offered me help. They said that it's fine, accept the UCT um, offer. I stay in Cape Town, you can come crash at my place. I'll pay, for, I'll pay for your flight ticket. But when my mom had this, she was like, hey, let me go talk about. <laughs> so I was like, girl, you know what? Just relax like just chill try to find another bursary i really really wanted to go to cape town try to find another bursary i did my utmost best in finding another bursary but it didn't work out so i was like okay it's now to go back to reality if i go to cape town with partial bursary how am I going to pay for accommodation? How am I going to pay for all those fees? How am I going to pay for traveling fees? I mean, what am I going to do with a partial bursary in a foreign province where there's no one that I know? How am I going to survive? So then I thought to myself, why not go to the University of Witwatersrand to check on your status? I went there. And when I got there, when I got to VET, they said that I do not appear on their system. <laughs> Guys, hear me when I say I had applied and I had a student number. 
But when I went to bed, they searched my student number. It didn't appear on their system. I gave them my ID number. I was nowhere to be found on their system. What happened is they said to me, it's fine. Your results are exceptional. They look good. So leave your statement with us. Then we can see what we can do to get you in the program that you want to get into. So I was like, okay, it's fine. I'll wait on you guys. They said they're going to get back to me after two days. So I was like, okay, it's fine. I'll wait for you guys on two days. I still have enough time to go and accept the University of Pretoria offer. I waited for two days. I message I didn't get any response I got nothing from that I was like God is this you talking to me are you trying to tell me that I should be going to the University of Pretoria because you can't just be doing this crazy stuff so yeah I had to come to peace with the fact that I can't afford to go to University of Pretoria of Cape Town now here's the thing the University of Cape Town offered me some amount I think it was like the same amount as the partial bursary. So when they were combined together, they were going to make, they were going to cover all my fees for first year. But the problem is that offer was for the applied mathematics degree. It wasn't for the actual science degree. So I was like, there's no ways I'm going to sacrifice my actual science degree for that money. So I'm just going to have to make peace with the decision that I can't afford UCT, that my things don't appear at the University of Perth and that I have to go to the University of Pretoria and accept the offer and register and just go study there. So that's how I ended up at the University of Pretoria. Now, a few pointers that I would like to give to someone who doesn't really have a similar story to mine but as in kind of a similar situation and doesn't know which university to choose um, please there are I think a couple of things that you need to consider one you must consider accommodation two if you are someone who gets homesick like just like that consider that as well how far is the university that you want to go to from your home is there anyone part of your family who stays in that city where that university will be. What did I first say? Three, finances, right? Four, the syllabus. And in our case, if you're going to be doing actual science, how many exemptions are being offered there? There are just like a few other things that you can think of when making this decision. These are just a few pointers that I thought I should share with you guys and that I thought they, should, they could be helpful to you. Decision doesn't not, not only lie. <laughs> the decision does not only lie with, oh, UCT is a number one university in South Africa. There's a lot that needs to go into making that decision. Come down, sit down with yourself, with your thoughts, with your God, if you are a believer and just listen to each and everything and jot down pros and cons of going to one university and pros and cons of going to another university and then just weigh your options and let your God decide for you. And then, yeah, I really hope that this was helpful to most of you and I really, really do hope that you did enjoy this video. If you did, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Comment down below on whatever that you want to say. <laughs> I really do appreciate every comment coming in. So yeah, that was it from me on today's video. Until next time, stay safe and stay blessed.